Hey everyone, Keely here from Long Range with the Lilies, and today we have a special guest. This is Nick Kitlicka from Loophold Optics, here to dispel some myths about uh, rifle scopes. We've probably all met somebody who has, you know, had some kind of weird myth or um, thoughts about how scopes work, and we're going to dispel some of those today, right? Yeah, there's there's a lot of them out there, and uh, it, I think it stems from, at least in my experiences, a rifle is pretty simple. It, 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 I mean, you can take it apart, you can look at all the internal parts and all that kind of stuff, and the scope is this magic black tube that sits on there, right? And you don't know what's going on inside the scope. Hey, how exactly is a rainbow made? How exactly does the sun set? How exactly does a positive track rear end on a Plymouth work? It just does. It just does. And there, 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 there's a lot of misconceptions about it and old information that's been passed down that sure. people you know, think is still relevant. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna tackle some of those and, okay. and, and go through it. Uh, one of the big ones that I, I hear a lot is a larger objective gathers more light. One, gathers light is a weird term. I even saw it in an advertisement the other day for another really? optics brand. Yeah, they wow. said gather light. They don't, it doesn't actually gather light. A scope is just optimizing the available light. Okay. But the objective size is dependent on the magnification and that's why you see like a, a, a scope that's maybe a one to four power mm -hmm. actually has like a 20 millimeter objective it has a very small objective sure but it's going to be a very bright scope uh because it has to do with the exit pupil exit pupil okay. is that disc of light that's hitting your eye right and the exit pupil has to be a certain size in order for you to see the the image that's coming through okay and the simple equation is it's uh, diameter of the objective divided by the magnification. So if I had a 50 millimeter objective and I was on 10 power, mm -hmm. that's a five millimeter um, uh, diameter um, uh, exit pupil to okay. your eye, right? Okay. I'm not really good at math, so thanks for doing that. I'm me. not good at math either. I hope that checked out. Don't check my <laughs> math later. So, um, but yeah, so, so that's the equation, the simple equation that goes to, and if you have too small of an exit pupil, you won't be able to see the, uh, the the target, right? You see scopes sometimes will be like a 45 power, I've seen 60 power scopes. That's a lot. That's a lot of power. And they're very, the eye box is very critical because that exit pupil is so small. You have to get behind there and you have to get exactly in line with the okay, optic, right? Okay, that makes sense. Whereas if it has a bigger exit pupil, you has a more forgiving eye box. You can get on there, you can kind of see it. And uh, that's why a lot of times, for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we're shooting matches and we have to shoot support side, I don't know how much you practice support side. I'm a natural side. at support side, so I'm like <laughs> in the minority with that. I am not, and I, I am so right eye dominant, I struggle with the left eye. So what I have to do, that's why I have to take my magnification down, because okay. by taking it down, you're actually increasing the exit pupil size, and it's easier for me to get in my uh, left eye okay. to see. Okay, that's a really know. good tip. I bet a lot right. of people don't know that. Okay. No, I, yeah, you, you you see people maybe on like, so this is a five to 25 right here, right. and they're on 25 power, and they're trying to get in there, and they're swimming around everywhere and can't see it. Right. Um, if you just knock that down, it actually, the eye box is gonna increase. Pro tip. Pro tip, yep. So, uh, objective diameter there one. It's dependent on the magnification. Um, and the design, the optical design of the, the system. Uh, the other one that's kind of in line with that is the main tube size, right? Right. So a lot of people think like, oh, it's got a big main tube that, you know, it's going to let in a lot of light. And that doesn't have anything to do with right. how much light is actually getting to your eye. Um, this scope, the Mark V HD, actually has a very large main tube, right? It's it does. 35 millimeters. Yep. But the, the siding factor is actually the erector system, which is the tube within the tube in here that's moving around. And uh, that's really the pinch point in the optical system that allows uh, light to get to your eye. Okay. So you could, have, you could have a ginormous main tube and you could have this small little erector system inside. Now you would have a ton of adjustment sure. up and down, left and right, yeah. but your image wouldn't be that good. Okay, right? okay. So, and that's actually to, I think every, every match I go to, so someone's like, oh, I just bought a Mark V HD. I'm so stoked. Why did you have to do a 35 millimeter main tube? I have to buy new rings now because like 34, oh, right. right? Yeah. So the reason we did that is because we want that erector system inside, that tube within a tube, yeah. to be a bigger diameter in order 
for the image quality okay. to be uh, consistent and good, right? That makes sense. With still maintaining enough adjustment up and down, left and right, uh, in order to you know engage long range targets. Right. Um, so uh, so you just need some more room in there for the bigger lens. That's really the pinch point. The, the diameter of the the, the main sure. tube it really has nothing to do with light. So okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so. Um, Another myth that I hear, German glass is better. People like to talk about the glass that is yeah. in a scope all the time. <laughs> I hear it all the time. I, it's one of the common ones that, it, that people ask me. And uh, uh, I can't take credit for this analogy, but someone said it once, uh, one of my bosses. Uh, it's like arguing where the rubber came from for your race car tires. Okay. It's like, do you ever ask where the rubber came from for, no. from your tires? No. No, you don't. Uh, it's the... It's the design of the lenses mm -hmm. um, and good quality ingredients, right? The, the little secret is there's only so many lens manufacturers in the world. Right. It's a very specialized thing and um, there's not a lot of people doing it. And we, as optics companies, generally buy from the same suppliers. Right. But there's, it's, it's almost like lumber. So when you're talking about glass, like mm -hmm. how it's graded, there's like grade A glass, grade B, grade C. So. Your premium uh, optics companies are only, only use grade A glass, and that's like stuff that would be used in um, uh, a, uh, like mechanical equipment, like um, uh, well, uh, uh, medical equipment, okay. right? Measuring equipment, stuff like that is going to use that same level of glass. Uh, but then we, you know, have our own special ingredients too, and proprietary secrets and ways we design things right, and things the coatings. Sure. And when we're talking about glass. Now, yes, the glass is a part of it, but the whole optical design of the scope also, right? There's literally, you know, 12 to 17 lenses in one of these, depending on the model, and all those have to work in conjunction together. Right. So there's there's a lot more than just talking about where the glass comes from. That's really a red herring that, you know, it, it's it's not important in the scheme of things. Sure. Does the, does the scope perform? So, right, yeah. 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 Um, let's see, another one. And I see your adjustment is off zero here. I know a lot of people, and it's not so much in the <laughs> long range community because like we're used to dialing our scopes, right? It, you, you generally, you know, dial your scope, but you see a lot of, especially old timers, just they don't, they're, they're scared to like dial the scope. Like if I was doing that and go all the way up. They're freaked out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like I, freaked I ran out. into a guy at, um, at our local range who um, just, he, was arguing about um, moving. He's like, but my zero is set. Yeah. My zero is set. Yeah. You don't understand. And I'm yeah. like, all you have to do is like turn it back down. He legitimately right. did not believe that his zero is the same. All you have to do is just set it back right. on zero. And and that might've been true, you know, back in the day. Sure. Uh, I can say, you know, loophole scopes, we never really had an issue with that, but I can't talk to other scopes. But what a lot of guys would do, or girls, uh, for hunting purposes is mm -hmm. you would sight in inch and a half high mm -hmm. at 100 yards yep. and you would never touch the dial again because we're talking in a hunting situation a kill zone right inch and a half high at 100 yards you're going to kill everything probably out to 500 yards sure. right. and that's generally your your engagement you right. know distances and then yeah it was like the sacred thing is like don't touch the don't, adjustment don't touch it. actually you know I, I suggest you get a brand new scope, you get a new Mark V, take it home, uh, grab that adjustment and spin the scope. You actually want to work it in. Right. Not that it really needs it, but there's some grease and stuff in there uh, when we make it new. And they'll cycle it through and they test it before it leaves the factory. But it's good just to well, run just, the adjustment a couple it's times. It's like breaking everything else in, right? Yeah. Like... And it, it's like an engine. It wants to run. Mm -hmm. It wants to be dialed. So d dial it in. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. Any modern scope, you're not gonna have to worry about you know not touching the dials or, or, or anything like so that. So that just blows my mind because you know I hunted when I was young, but I didn't pay enough attention to what was going on, and so having somebody say don't touch my turrets, like don't don't dial this, kind of yeah. blew my mind because that's what we do all the time in this yeah. sport. Right, right. Oh, um, you actually made me think of another one um, that is uh, uh, always sight in on the highest power. Like if you sight in on the lowest power. I've heard that before. Yeah, have you heard that one I too? I have, yes. Yeah, and that stems from what we call track out, which uh, again is an issue maybe in older scopes, mm -hmm. but in modern scopes it's not a thing. So track out would be uh, when, you're, when you're turning your magnification dial like this, you got lenses moving back and forth right. in the system, right? That's creating magnification. 
that it actually changes your point of impact with those yes. lenses moving. That's not not the case. So, and I I, I had that a couple of weeks ago. Actually, someone <laughs> asked me that. It was like, are you supposed to sight in on the highest power and then like not really touch it? And I was like, no, that's not not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing, not a thing not anymore. A thing. Okay, so, next. Yeah, next one. Um, <laughs> so weight of a scope, right? Okay. So I it's uh it always makes me think of that scene from Snatch. I don't know, that's one of my favorite movies about a heavy heavy gun, heavy pistol. Oh. It's a sign of reliability, right? Heavy is good. Heavy is reliable. If it doesn't work, you can always hit him with it. And it, like, okay, his yeah. scope is, uh, you know, a heavy you know scope. You know it's durable. You know it's durable, it's heavy duty, you know, it weighs a lot. It's actually the opposite. Right. Um, and we do, we do a lot of impact testing, we do a lot of other kinds of testing, and we found that a lighter weight scope actually performs better on a gun. Um, reason being, when you shoot, um, maybe not this gun so much. I, this one doesn't kick too much. Huh? It, it's not so bad. It's it's not thirty pounds. <laughs> it's, it's not thirty pounds. It might might be twenty. Yeah. But uh, so, so our base level line test, we take off a like a, a six and a half pound magnum caliber hunting rifle, right? That's huge. Okay. That the kick on that thing is crazy. So you're creating a lot of kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. That energy is coming up through the rings into the scope and that energy has to go somewhere. Right, okay. And a lighter weight scope will actually dissipate that energy better. It actually, it will flex. If we saw high speed video of that, sure. that scope getting shot, you would see the scope flex. And uh, the, the lighter weight materials also help dissipate that energy. So we're using all aircraft grade aluminum on the inside. Uh, we use very minimal amounts of steel or anything like that where other scopes, if you feel it's super heavy, there's probably a lot of steel in there, a lot of brass. Especially brass is especially not a good material because it's it's softer. It right. doesn't like all that energy and recoil, you know, hitting it. Um, so yeah, the more mass you have in that equation, um, the more stuff can move around. Maybe it's not going to last as long. Maybe it's not going to perform as better. Sure. So that's why you know there's some other uh, you know you see scopes come out and it's a lightweight scope. It's like, well, all the loopholes are like the lightest weight scope you are, know, across yeah. the board, which again, in this game, the, the, the weight of the scope isn't maybe your concern all the time because the guns are heavy anyways and you want to soak up the recoil. Yeah. But it's not actually about that. It's about the performance of optics. That so, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's engineering stuff that's way above my head, but. <laughs> Mine too. Science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, rings are another one. Laughing that, rings. That is something, um, yeah. I don't, so I don't technically even know what this is, but you know, we're in a lot of, uh, shooting forums and Facebook pages mm -hmm. and people talk about lapping your rings now all the time. And you know, you see these pictures and you know, some people are super, you gotta lap your rings. <laughs> and some people are like, no, don't, don't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah. I, I I've. What, so what is lapping your rings? You so guys so I don't know. lapping your rings would be to remove surface area from inside the rings in order to make your scope fit better, theoretically, inside. Okay. But the, the rings are machine, like precision machine. Like I can't, I can't do any better than a CNC. No. Like, <laughs> and we're talking like thousands of an inch, right? And even MDT rings are like, you know, what, whatever rings, you know, modern technology has eliminated the need to lap rings right maybe again this is all stuff that's you know back from the it's past a myth. It's, it's a, myth. a myth maybe if you know your buddy turned you a set of rings in his you know in oh, his man. shop and said they're good maybe, maybe you might have to lap those but again the, the the problem being that um if you if if those rings aren't perfectly uh, uh a perfect circle mm -hmm. so then you're causing pinch points you're causing right. more pressure down here or up here right and you could actually like egg, you know, shape the main yeah. tube if you wrench down too hard. That, on it, okay. Right. Um, that, actually, that's another myth. It's like how hard you got to wrench down on the. We we give you torque specs. Uh, it's 26 inch pounds for our rings. Okay. But uh, I, I know there there's other manufacturers out there that their torque specs aren't as much for the scopes because of the main tube thickness but sure um yeah some people i mean get a, like a breaker bar on there and they're like trying to <laughs> you know tighten the rings oh on my there gosh, no. but you gotta think of recoil recoil is not recoils this way not up and down so sure. you, 26 inch pounds is more than enough but yeah but yeah laughing rings not not a thing not a either thing. and you don't need to and you're going to do more damage than you are good yeah you're going to cause yourself more trouble especially if you're doing the work by hand and 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, with that material choice on rings too, mm -hmm. is a is another big one. Um, and uh, you know, for however many decades, steel rings were the you know that that's what you ran. And even our Mark IV rings, you know, those uh, those originally came in steel and they are heavy. And uh, then, you know, we came out with aluminum rings and people are reluctant to make the change to aluminum. Uh, just, again, the heavier. Yeah, more durability, right? right? Okay. But again, they're tested to the same standards. It all comes to de down to design. I'm going to use that lighter weight material that, you know, and uh, uh, especially in a hunting, you know, rifle or something like that, that I got to lug with me in the back country or something. Oh, yeah. I don't want that extra weight, right? No. Yeah, no, I am actually very excited about, um, you know, the lighter, so we're talking about the, the weight of the scope, and I'm glad that I have a light scope because we're shooting in the Hunter yeah, series exactly. now, and um, in that class, heavier is not better. Yeah. For sure, there is a weight limitation, and I, I'm shooting heavy Hunter because... Um, <laughs> What's what's the weight limit on heavy hunter? I think it's six. I think it's sixteen pounds. Yeah, sixteen pounds. And then yeah. the light hunter is twelve, 12 if I remember correctly. I think you're so right. I, yeah. I am shooting heavy hunter for that recoil <clears throat> management. Um, that's you know, and that's really where the scope shine too. Yeah, as in an environment like that, mm -hmm. is being able to have, you know, this this scope here is only thirty ounces. That's a big scope. Um, and then the seven to thirty five is only thirty three ounces. You only gain three ounces because there's extra lens in there. Right. And uh, so, uh, I mean, that's a light scope for that big and that magnification range. It's it's perfectly tuned for a competition, kind of like NRL Hunter or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you shooting NRL Hunter? I haven't decided yet. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gone to one. I actually I like the idea a lot. I yeah. like the idea of the blind stages and having to figure out everything on the clock. Uh, that's actually how I got into shooting is I, I shot one of our uh, RTC matches, the ones up in Pacific yeah, Northwest. Yeah, okay. And I shot an RTC match and I was like, this is the hardest thing I've ever, uh, you know, you think it you, is. you think you can shoot long range, you know, you're cause you go to a range and you lay down prone, it's nice and calm. Yep. And then I went to that and I was like, I gotta find targets and I gotta run my dope and then, yeah. uh, and then in the right order. And and then I went to a NRL match after that and I was like, wait, 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 you're going to, you're going to give me the book that yep. has we the targets all, and the distances right and, it's all, and I can run my dope off the <laughs> clock. So it was a whole different ball game, but mm -hmm. I, I would like to get back and more into that, you know, um, that style of competition where it's, uh, you got to do everything on the clock. Yeah. Um, it's just a variety. Like I like it all. Right. And, right. But you gotta, and it would probably actually make you a better, um, you know, NRL PRS type shooter. It, yes. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, th I think there's some definite things to learn there for sure. So, yeah. yeah. So okay. So those are just some of the myths that we talked about today. There are a ton more. I know that I've heard some really silly ones. Um, something about uh, we all have um, microscopic holes burned in our oh, retina. That's right. <laughs> um, from the from all the sunlight entering in through and going through. Um, and there's some other crazy ones that I've heard out there. So with that being said, please in the comments drop your crazy scope myth. Uh, we want to see it. Let us know what you've got, what you've heard. And then if you like this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And again, thank you, Nick, for being with us today. I yeah. super appreciate it. Not a problem. Um, and thank you for watching.